All righty, it's 5.30. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'll do a quick roll call. Uh, Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Present. And Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Okay, all are present. Well, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty, 2.1, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? Move to approve last meeting's minutes. I can't get any actually. Got a motion approved, seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. They're approved. Okay, start right out with 3.1, resolution 103. Dash 20 dash 21, October 5th, document 5.7, resolution establishing the 2021 budget and appropriations and the 2020 tax levy for use during the calendar year. Uh, Director Beeble. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight we're going to be presenting the uh, executive program budget, which includes basically the Department of Public Works. So we're going to be focusing on the Department of Public Works budget. And um, I'm quite proud to say that for the most part, it's fairly flat. Um, we do have some increases, but those increases um, reflect some increasing trends that we need to address, as well as mainly uh, cost, cost of living or cons uh, consumer price index uh, increases and some contractual increases that we have ongoing. So I'm going to refer to our, uh, our, our IFC, which we have as a background, and we'll start right at the top with engineering. Engineering, we, we, we're increasing it overall by 10,000 in contracted services. And this is what we're, we're, we're starting to see a need especially where it comes to structural engineering, environmental engineering, and some traffic engineering. Those are, those are three specialized areas that, for the most part, our, our, our engineering staff is civil, which is a generalized uh, engineering. It, it has a component of all these factors that I just mentioned, but they're not, not as specialized. These, this is type, you know, we have anything with contaminated soils or in, information where soil conditions warrant further analysis, we'll contract some of that analysis out. Anything with structural, uh, that's a very specialized area that will need help of, um, occasionally, as well as traffic engineering. We get numerous requests for uh, in incidences where we have a dangerous intersection and if we need to uh, do a, a, a signal warrant um, evaluation as well as doing some study in terms of traffic counts and pedestrian counts and so forth. So that's what that reflects in engineering. Other than that, engineering again is, is flat. We're not really uh, adding um, extra costs in that, in that area. Uh, streets division are what we call as our municipal service building administration. There's no notable changes for 2021. Harbor Center Marina Fund, again, no notable changes. It's, it's fairly flat across the board other than for some uh, slight increases reflecting the consumer price indexes. Streets and alleys and sidewalks. This is a, a large portion of our streets. This is our repair budget. We're, we're, we're proposing to keep it as we did for 2020. No notable changes in terms of adding a much more construction materials or contractual services there. And that would hold true for storm drainage as well as the street lighting. Uh, however, in snow and ice, uh, salt prices again have gone up. Uh, and, and again, we, we were under a contract with the state of Wisconsin, the Department of Transportation. We piggyback on the state of Wisconsin's uh, large purchase of salt for all the highways throughout the state. We're able to get into that bulk 
type of pricing by bulk contract. Uh, but nevertheless, it, it's still uh, increasing. So it's increasing 11,500. Our goal, however, is to, we, as you know, we've, we've, we've started to add brine and we started to add liquid, liquid calcium chloride to help reduce the reliance on actual rock salt. So ultimately, we're hoping to, to be effective, but yet we have to have a minimum order, and this price still reflects that minimum order. Otherwise, if we go below such, such an amount, and if we need more next year, we're only limited to percentage increases. So um, it's one of those, those necessary evils of being part of the DOT uh, SALT program. We get good pricing, but yet it's a little restrictive in terms of the flexibility and how much we can order and how much we have to have, to have in reserve. Sanitation and garbage. Uh, there is a $17,600 increase for tipping fees, and that reflects 3% increase, and that's by a contract. And we have a five-year contract uh, to, to manage our, our waste to go to the landfill. Uh, street cleaning. That's our street sweeping program and leaf collection program. We're not anticipating any, any major changes with that. Weed control is a small little portion of our budget. It's a, a mainly contractual. This is where if we get tall weeds and grass complaints, we'll, we'll inspect, we'll notify the property owner, give them X amount of time to get it rectified or get it cut. And if they don't, then our contractor goes out. Uh, so that, that's been a good program. And basically what we have in our contractual services gets reimbursed through then work orders and then charges back to those property owners, not, not following through in, in cutting their lawns. Their drop-off site, no notable changes. Uh, that, that's been a, a good steady operation and um, things are moving well there. City Hall, there's an increase in utilities uh, reflecting all of the new technology as well as all of the air handling now that we have in the building where prior we didn't have air, air handling in the building. Uh, for heat or for air conditioning. It was a hot water, steam heat in the past. So there's an increase in there. But overall, if, uh, as I, I mentioned, I think, uh, previously, if you look at the history of City Hall, costs overall, it's flat for the last 10 years. We're, we're, we're steady. It's had its peaks and valleys, but we're still trending right along where we should be. So it, although there's an increase from last year, last year when we budgeted for the building, we just really didn't know because we had no history of it being occupied and operating in the building. Civil defense, uh, there's no changes. That is our, uh, and that system has been fully upgraded throughout the city. We have new, new civil de defense sirens and uh, new, new telemetry where they're um, activated. So that's, that's, been a, a nice change overall with the maintenance that was necessary in the past. Cemetery, uh, again, really no notable changes. Uh, the same personnel assigned to the, to the facility, seasonal, as well as the work that's being, being done. We do have um, small little mon money to fix some of the roads and pavements that are, that are within the cemetery. And that's an ongoing annual kind of uh, maintenance activity that we try to attack every year. Parks, again, no notable changes. Uh, the big items in parks, you know, are our maintenance of the buildings and facilities as well as the utilities. Uh, but overall, uh, the personnel's remaining the same. The, we supplement a, a lot during the busy season with summer seasonal, so we're tracking, again, well with that. Uh, this past summer, however, we, we really held back on our summer seasonal with the, the pandemic affecting our, our park usage in terms of the rentals of the facilities and such. So uh, at the end of 2020, we're, we're anticipating that we should be in good position uh, in that area of the parks department. Maywood, no notable changes again. Um, the, we, we, we currently have a contract with Maywood and the association for them to manage it and operate the facility as, and then we pay for the utilities and upkeep and some of the, some of the activities necessary to keep it ongoing. The park and open space fund. Uh, this mainly is, is for our forestry. 
division, and uh, that there's no notable changes. That's part of our uh, emerald ash borer long-range forestry plan, and we're probably in our third, fourth year of about a seven to eight year program. And again, that's no changes. We're keeping it the same as last year. So we'll have activities in terms of treating chemicals with the ash trees, removing and trimming and so forth. So um, the treating program, we've, now we've hit every tree that we've treated. Now we're on retreats. And even with the retreating of trees, we're still having some loss of those trees. So the, 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 the chemical application to help preserve is eventually going to start dwindling in terms of the amount we'll be using because there is an, about a 10% loss of those that are treated on an annual basis. The Park Impact Fund, uh, no notable changes. That fund is, again, that is the fund that when we have new uh, housing units being built in the city, we get a fee for when they take out the building permit to build. So for instance, the Oscar project will have, let's say, 200 units in it. Each unit then provides us revenue to this fund to be used to implement new park facilities or new equipment within our existing parks. So you know, I, could, I could foresee, like, um, with the Oscar development, something over at Moose Park eventually, or something within the area at uh, Veterans Park that would, would con could potentially help as even Franklin Park, which is across uh, South Business Drive. So that could be a clear impact and use of that funds that we get for the impact fee goes right to that development or those new areas that need to support the new residents within those areas. And the last couple of years we've had with the apartments, uh, we've had a significant increase in the fund. So we'll be able to uh, make a difference in some of these areas. The stormwater utility fund, uh, that's, we don't have a utility per se. We, we had a utility years ago. Uh, it's been suspended. We're not collecting a fee anymore for what we call equivalent runoff units as we used to for residential and commercial properties as well as it could be non-taxable uh, non properties that would be charge this utility fee. We're not doing that, but the, the, the utility fund is still in existence. And that's mainly for when we have stormwater permits or drainage application, drainage permit applications, those revenues fund that account. And it's roughly only about 50,000 a year, but it's enough to keep, keep it in place for if and when eventually, if a stormwater utility does make sense again to re reactivate or implement for the city. And uh, we're finishing up a, a citywide master stormwater management plan. It's been probably 20 years since the last one was completed. We're in the final review stages of that uh, internally with our engineering department. And some of the early recommendations are some pretty major capital projects coming down in the next five to 10 years in just addressing stormwater. So th I think that's going to bring, the, bring that kind of discussion around a little bit more full circle is how do we fund that? Do we, do we have those projects compete within the capital improvements program against other projects such as roads, fires, fire engines, building improvements, um, to say the least. Uh, so the stormwater utility could be an opportunity to maybe fund those larger stormwater uh, projects through, the, through that funding mechanism, in other words. So again, stay tuned, that's not, not today, not, uh, and it's not for 2021, but I, I'm thinking within the next two to three years, we'll have to have a, dis a discussion on that to at least determine what, what really financially is the best way to fund these types of improvements for the long term. Motor vehicle division. Uh, there's an increase in rental charges, and uh, in a, right around roughly $50,000. The fund is approximately $2 million. So this, this 49,000, uh, or 50,000 roughly, excuse me, is about 2.5% increase is what we anticipated in our, in our rates that we're charging internally for our equipment. Again, this is a separate fund that we internalize our vehicle equipment 
That way it's separate from the general fund budget. So we're charging ourselves a, a, a vehicle rental fee, which that fee then goes into this fund for ultimately replacing equipment. That way we're not, again, competing with the capital improvements. Now, there, there, there was, if you recall, for, for those of you that have been on, on the council longer, we had a couple of years where we had a million dollars of capital improvements specifically for the motor vehicle fund. And that was really replacing the fund for several years ago when that fund had a surplus of roughly around, I'd say, $7 million. And there was about $4 million of that was take, taken and used for other debt repayment services that were needed at the time. With that, with that money being taken out of the fund, then the fund wasn't as solvent and things were starting to get, <clears throat> excuse me, the equipment was needing to be replaced. That fund was no longer able to keep up. Therefore, we needed to, to hit the capital borrowing. Ultimately, we do not want to go into capital. So now, instead of about a million dollars that we are heading to capital improvements fund for vehicle replacement, we've reduced that to 250,000. And ultimately, it should, it, we want to get it to zero, where we're just using our internal funding mechanism to replace equipment and not have to go and compete with those other capital funds. The recycling fund, it's a new fund. You know, we, just, we just implemented it last year. We're not increasing rates. They're still $4 a month. And uh, it just has a slight increase of 10886 That represents the cost of uh, the CPI index for the contract for waste disposal and recycling processing per ton. Lastly is the wastewater treatment plant division. Uh, we have... We, Increase here is 74,000 in interest investments to, uh, and again, this is this more of a, an accounting exercise, as well as an increase in 125,000 in billing services. Uh, the water utility you know, processes are, are sanitary. So when you get your water bill from the water utility, it also has our sanitary sewer charge on there. When we have the water utility process our sanitary sewer bills, they have the ability through the, through the Public Service Commission to charge us for that service. Now, it's, it, it, it's an expensive service. It's about $650,000 a year. But that what goes into it is just not processing the bills. It also processes their capitalization of the water meters themselves. So when the water utility had to buy meters and replace them through all the properties, as well as the technology for the radios to do the, 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 the meter reading itself. All of that type of cost is also built into this, this billing. So I just wanted to explain that. Um, and lastly, there's an increase in chemicals. Um, chemicals aren't cheap, but they're very necessary. And uh, so that's around 37400 So that's really quickly the highlights of the public works budget. Again, um, I'm very proud of the staff, their commitment. Uh, I have tonight with, with us the, all the superintendents um, and city engineer with us to discuss you know, any details. But again, we're, 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 we're cognizant of the need to balance and keep, keep the city at a high level in terms of the services that we provide and the improvements that we make on a daily basis, yet do it in a cost-effective manner that is, uh, recognizes the taxpayers and the ability for the, the community to afford this as well. Uh, with that, I, I, I entertain, uh, I just uh, real quickly, and I know Steve's on the line, he can maybe uh, provide more detail, but the water, the wastewater plant, the rate there is roughly about a 5% increase. Uh, there's, there's, um, that is a, actually uh, a much less, the last couple of years we were trending right around 9, 9% roughly at the wastewater, and that's because of many of the large capital projects. Now, we, we do have our South Shore Interceptor project that's going to be coming. That's roughly a $10 million project right now. However, we're entering into some preliminary design on that. 
as well as we're uh, just applied for a FEMA grant, and there's other grants we're, we're chasing to significantly reduce the burden of having the utility, the wastewater utility, fund that entire project. So there's opportunities there, and I think at this point, we're in good position with that project. Um, it's already less than the, about 14 million we originally planned, so I think only good news is, is going to come forward with, with, with those grants as well. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'd, I'd turn it back okay. to you and okay. be happy well, to answer questions. Okay. Well, thanks, Dave. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I really see the, you know, the work that's put into this. And I, you know, I, it, um, I, I guess I'll entertain any other questions from any other committee members. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Go ahead, Marcus. Thank you. Um, Dave, if you could help me better understand here, in your um, kind of like in brief document that kind of says what changes are notable or not, uh, I'm, I've kind of added up here roughly somewhere in the neighborhood about $300,000, $350,000 increase compared to last year. Uh, would that be reasonable to, to agree with me? Um, that, yeah, less no. than a million. I, I, okay, uh, what, 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 what I would look at, however, is uh, did you include like the motor vehicle, the recycling fund, and, and uh, storm, well, not storm water, because we didn't have it, and the w wastewater in that figure? Uh, I just went through the document, you just kind of went over um, where it starts with, the, uh, this is a request for public works committee consideration report date October 6th that kind of talks about wastewater as the last item. Right. That has like $200,000 in it alone. Um, so I, I, as long as we're kind of working off of that document and then this other document uh, that um, is noted the, as the resolution 103-20-21, uh, I'm showing here uh, a couple pages in, the budget summary says that for 2021 executive, public safety is going up by somewhere in the neighborhood of, I'm sorry, Public Works is going up in, in, uh, in the neighborhood about $4 million, $3 million or so. Uh, and you've only explained about 300000 or 400000 of it. Could you help me understand the difference there? The, again, the majority of that is is in the wastewater and in capital areas. Not, I, and, and what I, what I was pre giving you highlights tonight was mainly in what I would consider what is our operating budget. Those items that affect okay. th those items that affect the tax levy directly, and even within there, there's some like such as wastewater that doesn't affect the tax levy. That that's actually the water, uh, the wastewater utility billing of which I mentioned is roughly around about a five percent increase for next year. Thank you for the clarity there. Okay. Any other questions on the online here? Nope, none for me. I'm good. Thanks, guys, for all their hard work putting in on this. At this point, uh, can I call for a motion to uh, approve this and pass it on to general counsel? And I'll give that a second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, here. Anybody else? <laughs> I only heard two. <laughs> Rose? Do we lose some people? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, a roll call of it. Um, Alder Person Ackley. Uh, do we have anybody else on? Are they calling in? Maybe something? Or I wanna. I just see me and Marcus. You don't have a quorum. Yeah, you do. 
Yeah, we have a quorum. I guess we we have three. We have three. I guess we'll just. Yeah, Betty was I guess on. Betty was Betty on. Was I know she was on, and so was Rose. They were both, both were on, so. Well, we could, we could, we have a quorum to vote, so we yeah. guess we have to, we can just vote on it. Okay. Um, so then, uh, all the persons of Uh, all the persons votes aye. Okay. Thank you for your hard work, guys. All the persons Sorensen. Aye. Okay. And I guess Phillips is Rose still on yet or not? Okay, well, we have three. Uh, chair votes aye. Motion passes. All righty. Uh, next regular meeting date, October 27th, 2020. And I guess we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, an aye. Just kind of like. Chair votes aye. Okay. We're adjourned. Okay.